And welcome back, Mindsetters. Oh, well, welcome to the session, Mindsetters. <laughs> no, they, Sorry, they, they been a, with us. Yes, it's been yep. a long day. But anyway, Mindsetters, I hope you guys are ready for this last session of Learn Extra Live. Make sure that you have your pens and pads out and you're ready to make notes. Great 12s. Yes, I'm your boy, Ty, and I'm handling, well, I'm no, here with Tracy. Not, I'm handling hand this session with Tracy. No, and he is handling. It's yes. been a lot. We've done two sessions together already. Oh, Ty, it's been a long day, especially for you. I'm sorry. Okay. Mm. Anyway, great films. <laughs> we're going to be looking at the electromagnetic spectrum today. We're going to look at what it's made up of, what we use it for, and then we're going to add some extra equations into it using what you learned from photoelectric effect last week with Bruce. Okay. And mm. I have learned some things from folks. I know you're missing him by now, but um, I have a challenge question for them, but we'll get to that in a second. But it's actually a nice section, it's a nice easy section, but lots to learn. All right. Yep. So on that note, while you head across to the board, I'm going to tell these mindsetters, mindsetters, make sure you get on the page, get chatting to me, let me know what you guys are thinking. If you're lost in here, if you need help, post, 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 because so you know, I have these awesome prizes that I need to get rid of. So make sure that you guys get on the page and get chatting to us. Let me know what you're thinking, because the best post will get these awesome prizes sent to them, this Casio calculator and this awesome labeler. And I want to say, mindset is make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend, because yes, we're trying to push up those numbers right now. We're at 14,500 couple of people. So we're trying to get to 15,000 now. But we can only do that with your help. So, on that note, this is where I hand over to Tracy. Tracy, take it away. Oh, uh, thank you, Ty. Okay, so, before we jump right in, here is your challenge question. Okay, you don't need to rush too much about taking it down. I'm interested to see how many of you get this right. We will be posting the challenge question onto the website, onto the Facebook page in the next break. Okay, so, question is, the energy of a photon associated with a beam of monochromatic electromagnetic radiation is E. Okay, energy of a photon, oh, that's black, you can't see black on black. Anyway, if the wavelength of the radiation is doubled, the energy of the photon is now. Your option A is the energy divided by 4, option B, the energy divided by 2, Option C is twice the original energy, or option D is four times the original energy. In other words, I'm asking you, if we have a wave and I double its wavelength, what happens to its energy in relation to its original energy? We are going to look at that, but it is, it is also related to what you did last week with the photoelectric effect. Okay, so let's jump right into the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and once again, the board doesn't actually like me. What makes the electromagnetic spectrum so, so special? Number one, it has a huge spectrum, okay? We've classified it into, into seven main parts, okay? Those are the where we can see the best differences between them, but it's huge, okay? It ranges over a whole bunch. It is what the electromagnetic spectrum creates what we call a natural speed limit, okay? Which is 3 times 10 to the 8. Guys, there was some stuff in the, in the news recently about the possibility that things can actually travel faster than the speed of light. We're not sure about that, okay? This is something scientists are going to be working on for a good few years still. And the honest truth is, even though we, and once again it's sci-fi, where we talk about um, being able to travel faster than the speed of light or we go at um, you know, three times the speed of light, four times the speed of light, 100 times the speed of light, especially in things like Star Trek and all those sort of things. The honest truth is we're not sure what would happen to matter okay, at those sort of speeds, whether we would still be matter or whether we actually change into energy. So it's this whole debate still, but we're still considering for all intents and purposes, nothing can travel faster than the electromagnetic spectrum in a vacuum, which is three times 10 to the eight. Electromagnetic spectrum, what you did last week, photoelectric effect, has a wave nature and a particle nature. Okay, Some parts of the spectrum has a greater or more prominent wave nature, Okay, like radio waves. Some parts of the spectrum has a more prominent particle nature like gamma rays, okay, which means they behave more like particles, but they have both. And remember, 
They have, we know they have a wave nature because they can be reflected, they can be refracted, they can be diffracted. Okay, they have those wave properties, but at the same time, they behave like a particle like we saw in the, in the photoelectric effect, which you did with Bruce last week. And so we know that they can also behave like a particle because they can kick electrons out of metals, okay? And then, very, very important, no medium is required. They can travel through space. Makes them very, very special, okay? Now, how are electromagnetic waves created? Now, this is when I start to look like a little bit of a, uh, a what's the word, plasticine man. Okay, <laughs> electromagnetic spectrum. In the sun, let's start with them. In the sun, we have a huge nuclear explosion happening, okay? Constantly happening. Because of that nuclear explosion, we have tiny little charged particles constantly moving within this nuclear explosion. Those charged particles are like alpha particles, helium nucleuses, um, nuclei, sorry, hydrogen nuclei, all of these sort of things. It's tiny little particles are moving. You learned in grade 11 that when a charged particle moves, it creates a magnetic field. So these charged particles are vibrating, okay, and the electrons inside are vibrating. They vibrate up and down. As they're vibrating up and down, they create an electromagnetic way, uh, sorry, a magnetic field. And that magnetic field follows the charged object. So it goes up and then it goes down, and then it goes up and then it goes down. So it's creating this magnetic field. But you also learned last year, and you should have done a little bit of this in electromagnetic electrodynamics, that when we have a change in magnetic field, that change in magnetic field in turn creates an electric field, but they're always at right angles to each other. So what's happening is, and I'm going to try to do it this way so you might uh, sort of at an angle type thing. So you have the magnetic field doing this, going up and down, up and down. At the same time, you have a, and I already am, um, it's like trying to rub you. Yeah, okay, yeah, but it's, it's not, stop it. <laughs> okay, so goes, the magnetic field goes yeah, up and down. While you explain, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. And the electric field goes sideways, okay? So you've got this happening. There you go. Okay, you've got this one going up, one's vertical, one's um, horizontal. But they happen at the same time. So as the magnetic field reaches its crest, electric field reaches its crest. And I've opened the calculator in the process, okay? Didn't even touch the screen. I love this TV. As it reaches rest, they both reach rest. As it reaches troughs, and I can't go further, and I because my arms are too short, they reach their troughs, okay? So the point is, they create each other. So the creation is a charged particle which creates a magnetic field which in turn creates a perpendicular e electric field. So you have an electromagnetic wave created by an electron electric field and a magnetic field. Okay, charged particles. Then the wave equation, in fact, we've just done that. <laughs> Ties don't feel like, oh, I've heard this before today. Yeah, this is all very familiar. Sounds vaguely <laughs> familiar. You know, t trust me, it sounds only vaguely familiar to them too. Okay, wave equation, V equals F lambda. You did this in sun, still valid for a wave, except now we're going to use a special version of V, and maybe I should have a pen. Instead of V, we're going to use C, because we're going to use C, and C is specifically the the... Um, speed of electromagnetic radiation. You've learned it as the speed of light. Light is only one part of the electromagnetic spectrum, so that is 3 times 10 to the 8. Of course, it will be given to you, but I really hope you guys know that by now. Okay, now let me see if I can actually make this a little bit bigger for you, because this is ridiculously small. Okay, let's just... I um, know oh that doesn't... Okay, so here we go, and I'm covering up our logo. I'm sorry. But it's okay. Here we have our spectrum. Guys, it really is worth trying to download one. Make sure there's probably one in your books. You have to know this, by the way. Okay? You don't have to know the spectrum in detail as in knowing, I, just want, I don't want it to go anywhere, in knowing, for example, that radio waves have um, wavelengths of between 10 to the 3 to 10 to the minus 10 um, meters. You don't need to know that, but you do need to know that radio waves have the longest wave, shortest frequency, 
where, and gamma rays, shortest wave, highest frequency. Okay? Now, what I like about this particular, um, ooh, and I've done it again. Oh, good, it's fine. Is we're going to look at from radio waves. Okay? Guys, please be careful. And I've seen this um, a couple of years ago. My matrix got completely bent out of shape because in a Doppler effect question, they got asked about radar speed guns, which they were fine about until they said, well, it works on the principle of using radio waves. And as soon as you hear the word radio, you go, ooh, sound. Uh, no, 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 no. Radio waves, radio waves, not radios, radio waves are electromagnetic. Okay, we associate it with sound because radio waves give us radio. Biggest use of, ra of radio waves, radio stations, okay? They have very big, up to 10 to the 3, which means their wavelengths can be as large as a kilometer, okay? Kilometer long ra wavelength, brilliant. Which also means, though, that their frequencies are quite small, 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 10. So that's 10 megahertz to just over to, to about 100 gigahertz, okay? They, in terms of, the nice thing about this picture, in terms of their um, size, they related to about the size of people, okay? Unless it's a really small person with 10 to the minus 1, that would be 1 meter, and that I'm, e I'm even taller than 1 meter, so, you know, it's about barely. that. Yeah. No I'm joking. I'm well, joking. no, no, only barely, I agree, it's about <laughs> that. Yeah, don't go there. Okay, moving on. She's <laughs> national television. <laughs> okay. And all my <laughs> special children are watching right now. And they are rolling on the floor. Pretty much. <laughs> taking photographs and going, that's my teacher, mom. <laughs> anyway, then we get to microwaves. You all know microwaves are useful. Which is used for what, Ty? You're a single man? Yes, it's for heating up food. Food, yes. leftovers. Because we don't use the stove. I have Sometimes. seen it. It's in the kitchen. I don't know what it's for. You, okay, <laughs> well, it, that's what bachelors do. Um, okay, don't worry, bachelorettes do exactly the same. <laughs> it's a lie that we all cook. Okay, anyway, wave, your microwaves are slightly longer, higher frequencies. Their wavelengths are in the range of the size of an ant. Okay, so you can still sort of see them, but they're starting to get smaller. In the bridge where we start to now get infrared, we're talking about wavelengths that are about the size of the eye of a needle. Infrared, very good. We use infrared technology for time. Passing information through phones at some point. We can use infrared, same mm. with, with Bluetooth, but also, you know, in the movies, the army and them use it to look for hotspots. Uh, yes. Okay, so we can use it to find hotspots. Um, infrared on satellites, they can find the, the, the hotter something is, the redder it glows. We actually give off infrared radiation, which is why they can actually see it. Yes, our heat. It's our signatures. heat, so actually we all are hot. We're not actually cool. Cool doesn't really work. Technically. Technically, so we all actually <laughs> are hot. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay, like we said, I shouldn't give up my day job and become a comedian. <laughs> okay, then we get into infrared sort of squeezes into visible light. And <laughs> visible light, my producer's laughing in my ear. How rude is that? Mm. Visible light is infrared, is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. You do need to know the colors of the rainbow. These are the ones you do need to know what their wavelength range is from. So it's 700 nanometers to 400, th 350 nanometers, okay? That one you do need to know. Make sure you understand that. Also, with the visible light, I'm sure you've seen this when you did diffraction, you need to know which ones are longest, which ones are shortest, because that affects the degree of diffraction. So you spent a lot of time on visible light along the way. Now we start getting into our really small wavelengths where, for example, as we go into ultraviolet light, the wavelength is about the size of a virus, which just makes it sound very scary. Okay. Yeah. As ultraviolet light, as the wavelength gets smaller and smaller, it now starts to be comparable to the size of a protein molecule. Gets smaller and smaller as we get onto X-rays. X-rays wavelengths are around about the size of an atom, whereas gamma rays are the size of nuclear their wavelengths are the size of nuclear, um, of atomic nuclei, okay? Once we get to the very small wavelengths, okay, they become very high frequencies. High frequencies mean they have lots and lots of energy. The more energy they have, the more like a particle they are going to behave, which is why gamma rays are so dangerous. They don't have a lot of uses for us. X-rays become useful for us because they start to behave like a particle. I'm hoping you all go, I know what X-rays are useful to take X-rays. Surprise that, to take images surprise, of the bone. Surprise. Because 
X-rays can't pass through the density of the bone. They can pass through the soft tissue, but the particles then get stopped by the bone, which is then where you see the reflection. Ultraviolet light, um, probably the main uses for ultraviolet light, sun tanning. Okay, not the best thing to do with it, but you can. Um, ultraviolet Forensic light. Forensic sciences. Sorry? Forensic sciences. Forensic like si yeah. guys go into yes, I CSI. CSI. When they put the luminol, there we go, and they put the stuff on, and they make it all glow in the dark. It's a little, mm. far, you know, it's a little... Some of it is a little far-fetched. No, it's a little added to it, but it is the whole concept. Mm. Black light in, um, on stage. Okay, yeah, black actually. lighting. Um, ultraviolet is the nice stuff that cause it, it, create, it, it allows things to what we call photoluminous, which, not that, that I said that right, which allows things to glow because it's a chemical reaction glow that dark. happens. Glo glows in that light, yeah. Mm. Well, it, even ultraviolet light, if we had to have, say, ultraviolet light in the studio, ooh, heaven forbid, okay, um, even on here you would see my white part of my shirt glow, mm. um, even without it being completely dark. Though in dark it just looks more exciting, yeah. you know, and then, exactly. you, then you just see all sorts of things that you don't really want to see and we move on. Okay, <laughs> infrared, visible, visible, just, if they ask what is the main use of visible light, please just don't be silly about it, it's so you can see things. Okay. It's Simple. It, yeah, it, it's very obvious, <laughs> just be careful with that one, okay? And, I think we've done with that one for now. Lots of information. I think it's a good place to take a break. I and so then we're going to move on with some more stuff. All right. Mm. So on that note, if you guys are just having as much fun as we are, make sure you get on the page, get chatting to us, let us know what's on your mind. But on that note, do not disappear. We'll be right back after this break. Yes. And welcome back, Mindsetters. Hope you had a nice little break. And you went and did whatever you had to do. You went to the bathroom. You went to go see the snow quick. But you made sure that you came back and you're paying attention. I hope you guys have got your pens and pads out and you're making notes because I know grade 12s, you've got big, big exams coming up. But no pressure. I know it's always annoying when they said that to me. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm just playing, guys. Make sure you guys are already got your notes out, you, well, pens, pads out, making notes, and you're ready to pay attention because we're ready for the next session. And tra I'm going to hand over to Tracy. Take Thank it away. Thank you. Ty wasn't lying about you under pressure, guys. Um, if you're writing the provincial prelim, it's the 31st of 28th of August, 29th of August, somewhere around there. You have three and a half weeks. So it's getting to crunch time. Okay, first example that we're going to look at, we can see how much you were paying attention last lesson. Well, last lesson. <laughs> It's been a long day. day. Yes. Okay, last lo before the break. Okay, list the main types of electromagnetic radiation in. Now watch here. Order of, okay, maybe I should have a pen. Increasing wavelength. Please be careful here, grade 12s. Okay, don't just list them in any order. This one was nice because it's in exactly the same order as I gave in the in the note. In the picture where it's radio, microwave, infrared, and I just realized how we didn't put the challenge question onto the Facebook page in the last break. Yes, but we, we will, will next break. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma. That's the list they want. They could have asked it in order, okay, oh no, sorry, wrong way around. I lied to you now because it's decreasing wavelength. They said order of increasing wavelength. So it's got to be gamma, x-ray, ultraviolet, vi um, visible, infrared, microwave, radio. Okay, you've got to find a way to remember that. Make up a mnemonic, make up a rhyme, whatever you need to. Okay, next question. Says to you, um, the second question says, list the main use of radio waves. Well, we all, ra oh, I can't spell either. That's got an O in the middle. Um, radio waves, radio waves are used to transmit radio. Okay, so we use it to transmit radio stations, which then go to radios, okay? Um, or even um, radio waves for two-way communication with walkie-talkies. You know, um, these not these won't be actually no. These are these are wireless. Yes. These also work on radio waves. Okay, so our our packs and they work connect to a hub. Yes. So these these go through to they connect way behind the camera, but they're wireless. So the little they the they send out a radio wave, which then goes into the little hub, which then sends it everywhere else. Okay. Infrared, um, we said before the break, 
infrared on your remotes, okay, on your TVs, don't switch, off, switch over to the Olympics just yet, okay, so the infrared on your remotes, um, infrared where we look at satellites, that sort of thing, which can detect infrared on people, that uh, find all sorts of things out from that way. Gamma rays, gamma is used in cancer um, treatment, that's radiation chemo. treatment, chemo chemotherapy, no chemo, sorry, that's a different one, that radiation treatment is exactly that, they bombarding the person's body with um, nuclear radiation, gamma rays. X-rays for taking X-rays of the body to detect breaks, that sort of thing. We don't use X-rays for soft tissue damage, okay? Um, so, for example, last year I hurt my knee and my doctor didn't send me to an X-ray because we realized there was nothing broken, but we needed to see the soft tissue, so we had an MRI, which uses slightly different it uses a slightly different thing, so it, it can detect soft tissue, okay? X-rays are not good for soft tissue. Also, you would use sonar. MRIs are very similar to sonar for babies. That uses sound, not electromagnetic spectrum. X-rays are very bad for babies, okay? And in fact, when you go get x-rays done, boy, girl, or anything in between sometimes, they, on all the forms, they ask you, are you pregnant? pregnant. And boys, I really hope you say no. Because that's just awkward. Scary. It is, <laughs> a little. Okay, but you know, it's just one of those things, and they have to do it because no matter how young your fetus is, the x-rays can harm them, okay? It's also why the, the radiographers stand behind lead-lined glass, in those yes. little rooms which are lead-lined, okay? Because they're there all day. Bad for them. All right, moving on. So, what is important about UV radiation? And this is one of my pet peeves. Um, I come from British heritage. Both my parents were from Britain. Okay, but don't worry, I'm not supporting Team, team Great Britain in the Olympics. I am supporting Team South Africa, who we're very proud of at the moment, because they've done absolutely phenomenally well. But that's besides the point. And because of that... I have um, a very, very white skin, okay? And in fact, if you can see it, don't, don't do too close up, please. It's not pretty. This is my summer tan, my winter tan, my all year round tan. This, this, this is it, okay? I'm white. I can't say I can't really relate. No, <laughs> you're brown. Um, but, but, and I had an argument with a boy the other day because we were talking about using sunblock and he was like, I don't need to use sunblock because I've got dark skin, and they are no. particularly dark. And I went, well, actually, that's a myth. Guys, please don't think that because you're darker, all right, or because even if you come from North Africa, where, I mean, they have those beautiful ebony skins, that you can't get burnt. You just don't Can. get burnt like I do. But okay. you do get burnt. Oh, absolutely. And you turn into a raisin. Not pretty, and leather, not pretty. But mm. besides that, you still run the risk of skin cancer. Yes. Okay. And that's really, really bad. Granted, everyone tans differently. And even within families, everyone tans differently. My older brother, who comes from the same parents, same amount of time in the sun, might go a little reddish, then goes this beautiful olive color. And I hate him for it. I, lo <laughs> I love you, Sean. I don't, hope you didn't tune in when I saw it, said that. I do love you. But me, I go red, like the red on the shirt. And you stay that way. No, then I peel. And then I'm white again. I don't see the point. Not pretty. Like the ch colored mm, chickies at the moment. Because then you get crispy. Yeah. And <laughs> then you age. You know, I didn't get, keep this young for a reason. But what am I trying to tell you? What causes that? UV radiation. Okay. We speak a lot about UVA and we speak a lot about UVB. B, but there's actually a third one, UVC. The sun sends out three versions of ultraviolet light. A, B, and C. C is the one we don't really get concerned about because UVC gets absorbed right here at the top of the ozone layer. It never actually gets through. So we're okay with that. UVB comes through the ozone layer, hits us in the U, and UVB is what makes us go brown. UVB only penetrates <laughs> really just the top end of the skin, doesn't do that much damage. It's UVA that's the problem. UVA has got a very high penetrating ability. UVA is the one that, and this, whatever color skin you have, UVB, A, sorry, is the one that goes through, goes down to the dermal layers, so it gets past all this temporary skin, goes through to the dermal layers, and actually causes the damage to the skin cells. And it's those, it's that damage that causes skin cancer, it's that damage that causes your skin to go all leathery, and to make you age before. I, I knew someone who never wore sunblock, and by the time, I mean, she, 
even before she got to my age, her skin was like leather. It was absolutely horrible. It, it's just, it's not pretty. And that actually doesn't matter who you are. There's nothing wrong no one with wants tanning. To look like a handbag. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, she's not going there. Anyway, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with tanning, guys. Okay? Particularly for the lighter skin girls and boys. I know you want to be tanned. That's fine, but dirty moderation. And in fact, there have been studies now that show that even sunbeds are bad for you. Yes. Okay. So don't go all dirty in the sunbed. It does make a difference. It's, it's, it won't hurt me. Of course it will. It's exactly the same thing. You just mm. need more concentrated. So guys, wear, wear sunblock. Okay? Take it from someone with age experience. Mm -hmm. Please don't. It's just not worth it. And particularly for the light-fed skinned girls and guys, be careful. Okay? You definitely are more at risk. Though black-skinned ladies and gentlemen, you're also at risk, okay? And for you, your, your pigment, it just takes a bit longer. We're a little bit more at risk. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? But yes, I still keep out of the sun and keep myself nice toned brown. Yes. <laughs> keep your natural color. You know, people laugh at me. You don't want to see my legs in summer. In fact, I hide them. And people laugh at me all the time because they look at my tan and go, <laughs> it's so funny. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to die of skin cancer. <laughs> and this is Fair the way enough. God made me. So <laughs> I'm going to stay my nice lily white. And shame, my poor little nephew. Let's not talk about him. He's also like me. Shame. Ooh. I know. Someone had to get my jeans. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Before I do that, one more thing. How does sunblock actually work? Well, it depends on whether your sunblock has zinc oxide in it or not. There's a difference between sunscreen and sunblock. Sunscreen allows UVB to get through. Okay? And sometimes a little bit of UV UVA. Okay? So sunscreen won't necessarily stop you from burning, and sunscreen's the one you have to keep reapplying. Sunblock stops UVB and UVA. I use sunblock. I use factor 50 everywhere, not just face, everywhere. It's just not worth it. Like a okay. full skin coat. Basically. Sorry? A full skin coat. Pretty much. You know, and that's what, what cricketers do. If you watch the cricketers, yes. um, now that we, we just drew our last test with England, Go South Africa. I'm very proud of our South Africans right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, and granted, I think they got a little overboard <laughs> with their little like war paint, you mm -hmm. know, like Alan, Alan Donald no, used to do. Really and, yeah, and, like and, and I find it particularly funny on the, on the Indian players because of their dark complexion. <laughs> and they have this white sunblock. <laughs> but it, it's white because of the zinc oxide, actually. Mm. And that, it literally is sunblock. It's there to make sure they don't burn. And that's mm. how they, and they have to. But I also found out that mm. that was also used as a technique to um, almost deflect glare. Because sometimes mm -hmm. when you're trying to watch and you, the, the sun's actually, the light is shining off your cheeks, yeah. you can't see. So they do that to kind of keep their vision. That makes, I didn't know that, that but that makes sense. Mm. Same thing, like army people do that. Same thing kind of to help and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all the things you learn on, learn extra, hey? And yes. I learn every day. I think <laughs> I need you the great 12 show more <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Other thing, we spoke about that, x-rays. There's a nice copy of somebody's x-rays. Okay, and then cell phone and microwave radiation. That's in the radio microwave spectrum. We all love our cell phones. Let's be honest. When our cell phones die, we feel like part of our life has died. Um, microwaves. I know I couldn't live without my microwave, particularly microwave popcorn. It's my absolute favorite. Okay, we love these inventions, but remember, they're also bad for you over a long period of time. With, with regards to cell phone radiation, grade 12s, no one can say emphatically that cell phones cause brain tumors or whatever the case may be because as soon as one study it comes out, somebody else does a study to refute it. And it's one of those things that I think is going to be an ongoing mystery forever. I think there's a lot more things out there that are doing damage other than that. Like okay. Priuses. Like? Priuses. What's that? Toyota Prius. Oh, no, let's not go there. As in, yes, I didn't mention that. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm not really sure what he's talking about, so we're going to move on. Yes. Brilliant. All right. So explain why, and I think we've done this, why we need to protect ourselves from ultraviolet radiation from the sun because it causes skin, skin cancer. Biggest, biggest, biggest concern for us, okay? And premature aging. Wrong way. All right. Now, before I go into particle like nature, are there any questions right at the moment? Now. Sorry, I just thought I'd put you on the spot. Because this is actually a good place to go to a break then if we don't have any. I don't want to do this and get stuck in the yeah, middle. Yeah, because my thing is that I really want to go through them first because I don't want to just ask a random okay, one. Okay, so not I think Ty, let's go to a break. And mm -hmm. then the last session will be longer than normal. But um, then I'll start with this and we'll do the questions at the end and look at the challenge question.
All right. So on that note, as Tracy said, do not disappear because we're going to be tackling quite a bit in the next segment. So make sure, make sure you get those questions in so I can get them to her. But on that note, this is where I say we'll see you after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. I hope you had a nice little break. You went and did whatever you had to do. You went to the phone. You went to the bathroom. Whatever you needed to do. Now you guys need to make sure that you're back ready and paying attention. Make sure you've got your pens, pads out and you're ready to make notes. And again, I cannot stress enough. Tell a friend to tell another friend to tell another friend to get your friends on the page. So you guys can all chat and all have fun with us and talk to us and let us know what you guys are thinking. But on that note, this is where I hand over to Tracy. Tracy, take it away. Brilliant. Okay. I know there's a couple of questions, Ty. Let me yes. do the calculations, and then I think we handle all the questions mm -hmm. at the end. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, guys, hang on. All right, because also we want to get to the challenge question just before the end, but I need to do some stuff. It is on the Facebook page. It has been posted. Okay. So, particle nature, you did this in electromagnetic spect uh, photoelectric effect last um, last week with Bruce, okay, and remember that if light has a particle nature, then any part of the spectrum has a particle nature because it's all part of the same spectrum, okay? Light is just a name we give to one part of it where the, the, the wavelength and the frequency of such a nature that we can actually physically experience it and know that we're experiencing it, okay? So we go back down to what is a photon. Well, a photon is a quantum, okay, it's a quantity, it is a, sorry, there should actually be another, it is a energy packet of light. Light and photons are quantized. They're only, they come in discrete packets, so they come in multiples of a certain value, which is actually Planck's constant, okay? And the energy of a photon is energy E, Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, times frequency, whatever that frequency may be, or we can use energy equals Planck's constant times speed of light divided by wavelength. Hint, hint, these are the equations you need to look at for the challenge question, okay? So we'll see, it's a little bit of what, fastest fingers first? Yes. You know, like they do in certain game shows, okay? Um, so the energy is really important. The energy, when we, re we really are more concerned about the frequency of light. When... The energy gets higher, the higher and higher the energy becomes, the more like a particle it starts to behave. So, the best way to deal with these is actually look at calculations. So they ask you, what is the energy of EM radiation with a frequency of 3 times 10 to the 8 hertz? Well, we want energy, which is H times F, Planck's constant times F, 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34, times 3 times 10 to the 8. And actually, I do have this worked out because these are big numbers and I cannot do these in my head. So we get 1,99 times 10 to the minus 25 joules. Oh, no, big, big joules, not little joules. Okay, minus 25, big J. Guys, please. If you get an answer here for energy of a photon of, say, 1.99 times 10 to the 25, you have made a mistake. Not a chance, okay? This must be a negative exponent. Minus 34 is ridiculously tiny. It is ridiculously, ridiculously small, which means the energy that you're going to get from your photons is very, very tiny. Very, very tiny compared to what you used to. Okay, another one. What is the energy of light with a wavelength of 660 nanometers? So, wavelength 660 nanometers. Can we work in nanometers grade 12s? No, we've got to make it into meters. So, 660 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Nano is minus nine. This is visible. Okay, you can see this. And this is in the red orange sort of category. But they want what is the energy of light. So we can't use equals HF. I don't have F, but I do have lambda. So E equals H C over lambda. It's another way of writing it. So we have six comma six three 
times 10 to the minus 34, 3 times 10 to the 8. Neither of those values were given to me in the question, but I know those are their values because they're constants. And the wavelength, 660 nanometers. Now, I actually want to show you quickly so you guys can watch. Please watch how I do this on my calculator because I know this is something you guys really, really struggle with. Okay. Is we're going to go 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8. Okay, I want to push equals here because I'm going to make it easier. So that's equals. And now I'm going to divide. So that answer is going to be divided by 6, oh, no, 660 to the minus 9. And I get 3,01. 36363634, that doesn't really matter, times 10 to the minus 19. So when I write this down, it's going to give me 3,01 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Okay, nice and small, but we can manage that. Okay. We can now, manage. Sorry? We can manage. We can manage because we are clever. <laughs> The last question I have for you, and then we're going to jump right into all of the ones they're busy furiously th throwing at us. Or should yes, we? Yes, they've almost broken Facebook at this point. Have they? <laughs> okay. Um, do we have ha some have answered the challenge question? Yes, we've got answers for the challenge question. Okay, already, so, so I tell you what we'll do. Let me answer this one. Then I'll go through the challenge question, and then I'll deal with all of their questions. All right, no Because we have quite a bit of time tonight. So this one, I, I, I chose this question deliberately because it says, what is the energy of a photon of light? with a wavelength of 532 and one with a frequency of 13 gigahertz. And which one has the longer wavelength? There are three parts to this question, grade 12s. One, what is the energy of the 530 nanometer wavelength? What is the energy of the wavelength with a frequency of 13 gigahertz? And which one is longer? Three questions. Let's deal with that one. So my wavelength is 532 nanometers. So that's 532 times 10 to the minus 9. We can work out its energy nice and easy. HC uh, C over lambda. I've been talking too much. To the minus 34. 3 times 10 to the 8. And ooh, straight line maybe. And straight line, and lambda 5, 3, 2, times 10 to the 9. And we work it out, and we get, because I've worked this out earlier, 3,74 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Great, so please go and rework these out as well, or double check them for me. I, I mean, I do know I'm right. It's not for any other reason, then I need to make sure that you can actually get the answers because I know I have a lot of um, kids who really struggle with using their calculators and exponents. It's quite important. That was the first one. The second part of this was, what about the energy of the one with the frequency of 13 gigahertz? Oh, sorry. There we go. Oh, look at that. Let's do 13 gigahertz. Okay. What is the biggest problem with the frequency we have, because we can use equals HF. The units of frequency must be hertz, not gigahertz, okay? Giga is times 10 to the 9. Kilo times 10 to the 3. Mega times 10 to the 6. Giga times 10 to the 9. So that means this is actually... 13 times 10 to the 9 hertz, okay? We look at its energy, okay? And I've ran out of space, so what I'm going to do is let me actually do this somewhere else. Let's write it underneath. I want you to see all of it. Okay, E equals HF, 6,63 times 10 to the minus 34. Okay, and we get 8, ooh, my 
four, no, six, two, yeah. Eight comma six two times ten to the minus twenty four joules. Now, next question was, which one has the longer wavelength? I'm hoping you can tell by looking at the answers without actually having to work them out because energy of my first wave three comma seven four times ten to the minus nineteen. Energy of my second wave eight comma six two times ten to the minus twenty four. Lambda is at the bottom of a fraction. Bigger lambda becomes, the smaller the energy is, which means the 13 gigahertz has the bigger wavelength. But let's prove it, okay? So, um, V equals F lambda. V is actually C, so it's 3 times 10 to the 8. Frequency is 13 times 10 to the 9. So, lambda here gives me... 0, 0,023 meters. It is significantly bigger. Okay, so the 13 gigahertz one is significantly bigger. Very, very important. Which then brings me to the challenge question. I'm wondering if some of you have had to rethink your ideas. In the challenge question, the energy of a photon associated with, okay, if the wavelength is doubled, what happens to the energy of the photon? Okay, E equals HC over lambda. That's the original. Then I doubled the wave the wavelength. Okay, this part is the same as that part, so I can actually. So this is the first E. That's the second one. So my second one is actually the first one. Divided by 2, my answer is B. Please tell me somebody got that. Yes, we've got a couple of Bs. Well but done. then my problem is that what I always don't like is that when people just start saying, oh, my answer was C, but I'm changing it to B now. Uh -huh, yes. Uh -huh. But then, guys, well done. stick to your answers. Well, not necessarily no, stick no. to your answers. Uh, that's exactly what it is. Guys, it's actually, I know in this case, you know that you're wrong because you saw it on, t on TV. Okay, you've done it with it. But I can't even begin to tell you the number of times when I've gone through a test or an exam with a kid or I've looked and I've marked and I've seen what they've crossed out. I would say 90% of the time, your first gut instinct is always right. Mm -hmm. Particularly with multiple choice questions. This one is one you could work out, so you need to work it out. But with ones that you don't need to, 90% of the time, your gut instinct is right. I've even mm. seen with long questions where they've done it, they've gone back to check, and then they've changed it, and what they cross out is right, and then I can't mark it. Breaks my heart. Makes me oh, so upset. Shame. Anyway. What I was yeah. referring to actually was that, although, guys, yes, you post those answers, make sure <coughs> that even, for instance, in an exam, mm. just double-check yourself. Absolutely. Always double check yourself. Yes, you might go with your first gut instinct, but make sure you just double check to make sure. Just mm. a quick breeze through and just make sure you're feeling good about it. And that you've answered everything. Yes, but we have quite a couple of answers that are here, so I'm pretty cool. impressed. Yay. Usually I tell them that you need to post the answer with the explanation, but since I didn't say that earlier, I'm going to let them get away with it this yeah, time. Yeah, it's okay. Mm. But as a note from now on, make sure Always. that you guys post your, uh, your explanations with your answer. So we make sure that you're just not guessing. guessing. <laughs> exactly. Multiple guess. Yes. <laughs> right first. off the thumb. Yes. But yes. Okay, let's get into some questions yes, here. Yes, we've got about 10 minutes or so. Yes, because I actually have my own question, but I'll leave that one for later. Okay. <laughs> it's <a> more important. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we had a question regarding, yes, one of the students, wrote, would we need to know the entire EM spectrum? Yes, you do. You do need to know them in order, okay? Make sure you know the order. Um, it, like I said, that first question where then I asked you in decreasing wavelength or increasing wavelength, decreasing, increasing frequency. You don't need to know the specific values, so you don't need to know what their wavelengths and frequencies are, but you do need to know the order, absolutely. All right. Then we have another one from Michael. Mm. Wanted to find out, um, how does radiation and contact to the skin damage tissue? It's because of the penetrating ability, Michael, because the, something like UV radiation starts to act more like a particle, 
Okay, so it's the same concept as photoelectric effect. So what happens is that radiation, because of the energy it has, when it goes through the skin, okay, wa wa electromagnetic waves can move through po objects, it goes through the skin and the energy it has causes the um, particles, like the, the cells and all that, that sort of stuff, to heat up, and that's what starts to cause the damage, basically, in a very basic terminology. Starting to go into life sciences mm. there. Yeah. Then you also want to find out in terms of, I'm assuming this subject is more mm. refraction of light, because you want yeah. to find out how does that process work in terms of when light hits a mirror and bounces off. Okay, that's, that's all dependent on the object. Some things just are made of a material that light cannot travel through. Okay, so it's the same as you running into a wall and bouncing off the wall or mm. a tennis ball being hit against a wall. Some things it just can't go through. So it hits a barrier that it can't penetrate. So instead of going through it, it just bounces off, mm -hmm. basically. And then other things, could you say, are like jelly? Like you running into jelly or yes. just absorb you? And you're, or through um, an open door or through air where you can just... So some things are able to transmit um, parts of the spectrum, some things are not. It's, it's, it's all about what they're made up of, their chemical makeup, pigments, that's the thing. Okay. Yeah. Then um, Mo. Mm hmm. Et. See, I'm not even going to try to say the name I've if he can't. I butchered this name so badly, but it's M O E T G E T J I E. Moihi, I'm assuming. I'm sorry if I've butchered your name. <laughs> so I'm not even going to try to say it because it'll be even worse. Even but on. anyway, talking of visible light, what happens for um, us to actually be able to use color just the way it is? Or not Basically, really um, sure. Look, um, sweetie, I think if you're asking about color mixing, that has been completely taken out of your curriculum. All right, you're not expected to know. Though, as interesting as it is, you are not expected to know how color works. Okay, so you're not going to be asked about color mixing, not with light, not with paint, not with pigments, any of that stuff that is out of your curriculum. It is in all of the past exam papers except for last year. Ignore those questions, okay? You do not need to know it. But in very basic terms, you, for example, see that this shirt is purple, okay? And uh, it depends on your, your TV screen as to what shade of purple, okay? Mm -hmm. But it is purple. Now, you see the purple color because the white lights in the studio, white light is all seven colors and all possible combinations of it, which then hit my shirt. The pigment, the dye that's used in the shirt, so the chemical reaction, causes only certain colors to be reflected back, which is then gives you the perception of purple and all the rest get absorbed. Okay, mm -hmm. and things like my black undershirt, this absorbs all the colors and reflects nothing back, mm -hmm. which is why you don't see it. Also why black clothing tends to be warmer if you're out in the sun, because it takes everything in. And then just keeps it. Yes, because it doesn't reflect any of the light mm. energy away. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty interesting. Cool. Then Londi, we also want to find out what is the what is the relation that exists between the energy transferred by a quantum of EM radiation a and photon? the pen well yeah. photon <laughs> of yeah. EM radiation and the penetrating ability of the wave. The greater the the energy of the photon the greater its penetrating ability, okay? Remember, in your frequencies, if you look at your spectrum, if we go back to a spectrum, which is over here, okay? In my spectrum, my gamma rays, which have the highest frequency, shortest wavelength, also have the highest amount of energy. They are more likely to behave like particles. They have the biggest particle in nature. They will have the highest penetrating ability. Higher penetrating ability, greater energy, because E equals HF. Bigger frequency. Okay. Then Michael again. Wants sure, to Michael. Out. He's been on the page. I know. All hard. night. It's brilliant. All Hello, night, Michael. Like, That's what we like. Then he says, um, basically he says, guys, I'm enjoying the show. Thank <laughs> you, Michael. <laughs> I'm um, glad. He's just, we st we got to be doing something right. He stayed on for, what, two yeah. hours? I just wanted, he just wanted to say hi. And oh, thank hello, you so Michael. Thank you. And then, yes, Nsako wanted to find out, is it true that EM waves travel in a vacuum at a constant of V equals three times 10 to the power of eight? Yes. All, we do in the, all, all they've done there is put a V instead of a C. Okay, all electromagnetic radiation. In fact, we consider it also in air to be traveling at three times 10 to the eight. That's a constant. Doesn't change. Can't go faster than that. Okay, and at this point, I think Ooh. I'm out of questions. Ooh. 
Hold on. <laughs> Let me see if I can refresh and more questions have come okay. in. Again, mindset is, as I've been saying earlier, make sure well, that you guys keep posting. Didn't you say you had a question? So while you refresh, tell me what your question was. My question is, for instance, because I'm sure this was a question that was going to come up at some yep. event. Um, for instance, using lasers yes. as an in surgery. Yes. Like um, the ability for lasers to cut through objects and, for instance, uh, repair, mm. like as in like laser eye therapy, mm. people wear glasses and like um, laser lancets for cutting. For cutting, yeah. yeah. That's how, how did that function? That's, um, that's a special function of, of light, okay? Mm. It's the way the light is. And in fact, lasers, unfortunately, also been taken out of the, being out of the <gasps> curriculum. But it's not no. good. I know. It was actually such a fun thing. But basically what it's doing is we're increasing the frequency of the light to such an extent that we're increasing its penetrating ability. And if it can penetrate, then it can do all those other things that it can do. And remember, with lasers, you can have such fine beams of light that that's why it does that fine cutting. Line, yes. Okay, so it's, it's all about its penetrating ability okay. and what they use to make it and, wh and what color it is and all of those sort of things. You know, and of mm. course, they make a big deal out of it in um, movies. You know, when they try and cut That's people in saying. half. So cool. I know, oh. and it's got all the noise. Lasers don't make that yeah, noise, by the way. They kind of okay. just like just go. Yeah, they don't make a noise. It's great fun. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Do you have any questions? Yes. Yay, I we love have you guys. one more. Yes. Uh, well, a couple more. Um, well, again, Michael just wanted to get just <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more clarification on um, the term penetration in terms of it's going go through. Going through. Penetrating just means going through. And the, be the higher something's penetrating ability, the the more it can actually, the more stuff it can penetrate, okay? So something with a, radio waves have a low penetrating ability. Radio waves can get stopped by a wood, wood material, okay? Gamma rays can only be stopped by things like lead. X-rays are stopped by lead, but they can go through wood, they can go through tissues, all of that sort of thing. So but penetrating ability, we're talking about the sort of things that it takes to stop it, to actually mm -hmm. stop it from moving, to absorb all of it. Okay. Yep. And then we have the infamous, why is the sky blue? Because it's reflecting the ocean. No. <laughs> <joking>. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. No, it's not reflecting the ocean. It's actually got nothing to do with what we're doing at the moment. Um, it's, got to do, it's got to do with the, the fact that when light comes from the sun, it goes through our atmosphere, in, and this is really brief, okay, because we're, we're going to run out of time for a proper exp explanation. As it comes through the atmosphere, it hits the water droplets in the atmosphere. The water droplets act like prisms. Those prisms um, make the water droplets, the light refract, change direction, and it splits it up into the colors of the rainbow. And simply because of, and remember, red light is at the bottom here, okay, it's got the shorter, wa sorry, red light's got the longer wavelength, blue light's got the shorter wavelength. The red light gets refracted in such a way that it actually goes beyond our eyesight, but the blue light gets refracted just enough so that we can actually see it in the way it gets reflect, reflect, uh, ref, uh, pff, ref, it, it's time it's to say goodbye. It's, it's been reflected <laughs> across the sky. Okay, it is not because the ocean is blue because um, then we'd be then we'd have brown skies. Well, actually, we do have brown skies in Java. Um, green skies over fields because it's not. It's because of the. The, the water droplets, basically. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I have to say goodbye, but, sorry, I have to say this. This is, I need to say shout out to some very special young ladies yes. and the two gentlemen in a very special class of mine, my grade 11s, that who should be watching. If you're not, I'm going to smack you. And I won't actually smack them. I love you guys. And it's time for Ty to say goodbye. Yes. And on that note, mindsetters, I've had a blast. And I've had so much fun in this session. And yes, I'm going to be scanning through the page to find the challenge question winners. And we're going to be giving away these awesome Casco and this, and this labeler. And on that note, I want to say a quick shout out to Liberty. Thank you for sponsoring. And this is where I sign off and say, see you next time.